Welcome to today's deep dive, uh, where we're going to be looking at something that really affects all of us here in Canada, mm -hmm. even if you haven't uh, yet thought about it directly. We're going to be talking about what happens after immigrants arrive here in yeah. Canada. It's called onward migration. And we have a really fascinating report, uh, the Leaky Bucket Report for 2024 from the Conference Board of Canada. And it's just, uh, it's jam-packed with insights. Yeah, it really is. And I think this report, you know, it's not just about statistics. It really gets to the heart of Canada's future. You know, our economy, our communities, the whole picture. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think that's something that is really important for us to consider is, you know, we talk about immigration a lot here in Canada, but we don't necessarily always talk about what happens next. And the report actually, uh, you know, the, one of the headline figures in it is that one in five immigrants actually leave Canada within 25 years. Yeah. Which is startling when you think about it. Uh -huh. You know, it's like investing all this effort into attracting global talent and then seeing it walk away. Exactly. Like the, the analogy of a leaky bucket is so apt. You know, Canada invests heavily to attract newcomers to settle them. But if they don't stay, hmm. you know, we're, we're not getting the return on that investment, are we? We're not. We're losing the spills, the innovation, the very diversity that we aim for. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that that's something that we need to be really cognizant of. It's not just how many are leaving, it's also when they leave. And the report highlights that over a third are gone within the first five years. The highest risk period is years three to seven. Yeah, those initial years are so critical. Um, you know, think about it. Like, you're settling in a new country, you're trying to find work that matches your skills, affordable housing, you know, building a life. All of these things take time. And if those pieces aren't falling into place, I think it's natural for people to reconsider their choices. Yeah, absolutely. It's like you're plant, you know, uh, planting a sapling. It needs the right conditions to thrive. <laughs> so before we kind of dig deeper into the why, yeah. I'm going to look at uh, where this is happening. And the report found that onward migration isn't uniform across Canada. Right. Yeah, regional differences are quite significant, actually. Um, you know, Atlanta, Canada, for example, has the highest onward migration rates, both short and long term. That's interesting because I know they have specific programs to try to attract immigrants there, like the Atlantic Immigration Program. So why are people leaving at such high rates? That's the paradox, isn't it? It suggests that there's kind of a disconnect between attracting immigrants and creating an environment where they can actually thrive long term. So, you know, the Atlantic Immigration Program might be getting people in the door. But what happens after that? Yeah, and I think that that's a really important question to ask. Yeah. And it gets even more granular than that, because within provinces, people are more likely to leave smaller cities than larger ones. So you think Halifax versus Toronto, for example. Mm -hmm. What is it about those big urban centers that's so attractive? I mean, it, it often boils down to opportunity, doesn't it? Uh, larger cities typically offer a wider range of jobs, uh, more diverse social networks, uh, a greater variety of services and amenities. And all of those factors can be really crucial when you're trying to, you know, establish new life somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so brace yourself, because this is a really surprising finding from the report. Mm -hmm. Economic immigrants, so the ones who are selected for their skills and their potential, they're the most likely to leave. Yeah, I know. You know, and it challenges that that narrative that we sometimes hear about immigrants being a drain on the system. These are the individuals that we're actively seeking out, right? Mm -hmm. The ones who are supposed to be contributing to our economic growth. And yet they're the ones who are feeling the pinch. Yeah. And the report also finds that international students who become permanent residents are especially at risk, particularly those who gained residency through provincial programs, yeah. but haven't had much Canadian work experience yet. Yeah. It's almost like you can imagine investing in an education in a new country only to find that your skills aren't really recognized or valued in the job market. It's a frustrating situation, and it's understandable why some people might start looking elsewhere. It's a loss for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. The individual misses out on opportunities. Yeah. Canada loses the talent and the potential that they bring. You know, we're not just talking about statistics here. These are real people with aspirations and dreams. Absolutely, and it underscores the importance of creating you know, smoother pathways for newcomers to transition into the workforce. We need to make sure that their skills and qualifications are recognized and valued. Right. And let's not forget about Francophone immigrants. They're leaving at even higher rates, mm. especially from Ontario, despite efforts to attract them there. Yeah, this goes against the assumption that, you know, Quebec is the primary destination for French speakers. Clearly, Ontario is facing its own challenges in retaining this group as well. Yeah, it really raises questions about the effectiveness of support systems. For French-speaking newcomers outside of Quebec, are they getting the resources and the support that they need to integrate and to thrive in those communities? It's a complex issue, but it's definitely one that demands attention. 
If we want to attract and retain Francophone immigrants, we need to ensure that they feel welcome and supported in communities across the country. Okay, so so far we focused on where people leave and who is leaving. But there's another fascinating layer to this whole story, and that's citizenship status. Right. And the report found that immigrants from countries with stricter rules about dual citizenship, they're actually less likely to obtain Canadian citizenship before they leave. Yeah, the findings were quite striking. Immigrants from countries with more restrictive dual citizenship policies are generally less likely to become Canadian citizens before leaving. It's almost as if they're hedging their bets, you know, yeah. keeping their options open. It's a complex dynamic. It could indicate a lack of full commitment to Canada, but it could also just reflect a desire for flexibility and the ability to, you know, maintain ties to their country of origin. There's so much more to unpack here. This report is a real eye-opener. It reveals the complexities of onward migration in Canada. It certainly gives us a lot to think about. In the next part of our deep dive, we'll explore some of the report's key recommendations for addressing these challenges. We were just talking about how, you know, immigrants from countries with those stricter rules on dual citizenship might be less likely to become Canadian citizens before leaving. Yeah, it makes you think you know about their long-term plans, right? Yeah. How secure do they feel about, you know, putting down roots? Exactly. And that sense of security or lack thereof seems to be influenced by more than just those, you know, legal frameworks. The report actually dives deeper into the regional differences within provinces, too. Oh, that's right. We were talking about how people are more likely to leave smaller cities. Mm -hmm. But the report actually gives us some specific examples, doesn't it? Yeah, it highlights that if an immigrant leaves Nova Scotia, they're statistically more likely to have been living outside of Halifax than within it. Okay, so it's not just about being in a particular province. It's also about the specific city that you settle in. Exactly. And this pattern actually holds true elsewhere, too. Um, Calgary, for instance, sees less onward migration compared to other parts of Alberta. Wow, it's all starting to feel like a very intricate puzzle with all these interconnected pieces. Yeah, it is a good way to put it. This report doesn't offer simple answers, but it definitely gives us a much clearer picture of the complexities involved. So zooming out a bit, you know, what does this tell us about the appeal of larger cities for immigrants? I think it underscores the importance of factors like the job market, uh, social networks, and access to services. Mm. And larger urban centers often have a bit of an advantage in these areas. Yeah, it makes you think about what smaller communities could do to become more attractive to newcomers. Absolutely. Policymakers at all levels need to consider these regional and local variations when they're designing programs to attract and retain immigrants. That one-size-fits-all approach is just not going to work. Now let's switch gears a bit and talk about another really interesting finding from the report. The link between an immigrant's original citizenship and their likelihood of leaving Canada. And specifically, the report looked at whether their home country allows dual citizenship or not. Right, and the findings were quite striking, actually. Immigrants from countries with more restrictive dual citizenship policies are generally less likely to become Canadian citizens before leaving. It's almost as if they're keeping their options open. Oh. You know, maintaining a connection just in case things don't work out here. That's one interpretation. And it suggests that their decision to stay or go is influenced by factors beyond just their experiences in Canada. It's also about their connection to their country of origin, their sense of identity, their long-term goals. All of these things play a role. And the report gives some specific examples, right? It does. It points out that, you know, between 40% and 60% of onward migrants from countries like Ukraine, Bangladesh, Lebanon, and Iran had obtained Canadian citizenship before leaving, whereas immigrants from countries with more tolerant dual citizenship policies tend to be more likely to become Canadian citizens. So what does all this mean for efforts to encourage immigrant retention? I think it suggests that we need to think beyond just purely economic factors. We need mm -hmm. to consider the broader context of an immigrant's life, you know, their sense of identity, their connection to their home country, their long-term aspirations. It's like we need to create an environment where immigrants feel like they can truly belong, where they can embrace their new life here in Canada without feeling like they have to choose between their past and their future. That's a really powerful way to put it. It's about fostering a sense of inclusion and opportunity that really transcends borders and nationalities. This report is full of such thought-provoking insights. But what about solutions? Does it offer any recommendations for how we can tackle this onward migration issue? It does. And they really highlight the need for a multifaceted approach. First and foremost, it calls for strategies that consider who is leaving and when. So moving beyond these broad generalizations, 
and really trying to understand the specific needs and challenges of different immigrant groups at different stages of their settlement journey. Exactly. It also emphasizes integrating retention targets into immigration policy. That's interesting. So instead of just focusing on attracting immigrants, we also need to set goals for how many we want to retain over specific periods. Precisely. And it's not just a federal responsibility either. The report recommends supporting provincial and municipal policymakers in addressing those unique retention challenges in their regions. It sounds like it needs to be a collaborative effort involving all levels of government. Absolutely. And it goes beyond just the government, too. The report also calls for engaging non-governmental stakeholders. So, you know, settlement service agencies, educational institutions, community organizations in a review of those existing programs. And the goal is to ensure a strong focus on retention. OK, that makes sense. But are there any specific recommendations for certain groups, like those Francophone immigrants that we talked about earlier? Yeah, the report specifically recommends expanding integration services for Francophone immigrants, especially in Quebec and Ontario. And it really calls for a clear focus on retention, acknowledging the higher rates at which this group is leaving. This deep dive has been incredibly informative. We've explored the complexities of onward migration, the challenges it presents, and some potential solutions. It's a complex issue with no easy answers. But by understanding the trends and the motivations behind them, we can start to develop more effective strategies for creating a Canada where newcomers not only arrive, but also choose to stay and thrive. You know, we've been really unpacking this leaky bucket report. Yeah. And it's given us a lot to think about. We've looked at the numbers, you know, the regions, uh, even the impact of citizenship policies. Mm. But I keep coming back to, you know, this one question, why? Yeah, the why is so crucial, right? I mean, the report does a fantastic job of analyzing who is leaving. But to really address onward migration, we need to dig into those motivations behind it. It's like trying to fix a leaky bucket yeah. without even knowing where the holes are or why they're there in the first place. We can patch a few spots. But without addressing those root causes, mm. the problem's going to keep coming back. Yeah, it's a great analogy. And it highlights the need for m more in-depth research, you know, beyond the statistics. We need to hear the stories and the experiences of immigrants who have chosen to leave Canada. Yeah, their hopes and their expectations when they arrived, the yeah. challenges that they faced that ultimately led to their departure. Exactly. What were their goals? Did they feel welcome and supported? Did they find opportunities that matched your skills and aspirations? I mean, these are the questions we need to be asking. And it's those answers, right, that can help us to inform those more effective policies policies and programs, it's about connecting that data with the human experience. Precisely that's where the real work begins. It's not just about tweaking existing programs. It's about understanding those underlying reasons why people choose to leave. So as we wrap up our deep dive today, I want to leave our listeners with kind of a thought-provoking question. Think about what factors would make you stay in a country or leave it. What are your non-negotiables? What would make you feel truly at home, truly invested in a place? It's a really good question worth pondering. And as you reflect on your own kind of stay or go factors, think about how they connect to Canada's current situation. Are we creating that environment where newcomers feel welcome, supported, valued? Are we providing the opportunities they need to build successful and fulfilling lives here? I think those are really fundamental questions that we as a nation really need to grapple with. This leaky bucket report has really illuminated the complexities of onward migration. But I think it's just the starting point. It sparked a really crucial conversation. The more we understand about why people leave, the better equipped we'll be to create a Canada where newcomers not only arrive, but choose to stay and thrive. So if this deep dive has piqued your interest, I definitely encourage you to check out the full Leaky Bucket 2024 report from the Conference Board of Canada. It's a treasure trove of insights, and it's a real call to action for all of us. Thanks for joining us.